हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज लेक्चर थ्री लेक्चर नंबर थ्री ऑफ चैप्टर वन दैट इज इलेक्ट्रोस्टैट इन लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द चार्जिंग बाय फ्रिक्शन एंड चार्जिंग बाय इंडक्शन टुडे इन दिस लेक्चर we will discuss about the charging by it was the third point charging by conduction it require physical contact suppose you have a body which is not charged initially that is the neutral body again i'm telling you what the mean of neutral body it is the body having equal amount of positive and negative charges this is the neutral body now you are having this neutral body and another body this neutral body suppose the charge 5 coulomb this coulomb is the si unit of charge it is coulomb okay in short we write here with the capital letter c actually this coulomb is very big unit of charge so we use this unit with mathematical superfix like milli coulomb 10 to the power minus 3 coulomb micro coulomb 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb nano coulomb 10 to the power minus 9 coulomb pico coulomb 10 to the power minus 12 coulomb femta coulomb 10 to the power minus 15 and so on so this is a big unit of charge we use as coulomb and we use mathematical superfixes to represent charge in small amount now students suppose you are having a positive 5 coulomb charge body and this is neutral body this one this is neutral body if you make a contact this body say a and b with this body then what will happen this is the initial condition so the final condition will be after contact and separation you make contact and separate this body a and this body b what will happen first this two body will have the total charge how much the total charge will be q a it was 0 and qb it was 5 coulomb what will be the total charge it is qa plus qb total 5 coulomb and now the charge will distributed equally remember students actually the distribution of charge depend upon the shape and size of the body also we are discussing here if the both both the body are identical so let me draw this body as it is of the same dimension as a this was the neutral body body a and b are of same dimension in detail we will discuss in next chapter what will be the charge distribution if the body have the different dimension so both the body have the same dimension of radius r now the total charge is 5 coulomb and this 5 coulomb will equally distributed on both the body a and b so it will have 5 by 2 coulomb positive and 5 by 2 coulomb positive in this way the charge will distribute for few second 
pause your beauty video and try to solve this question the question is if you are having two body body a and body b this body a having minus 3 coulomb and this body have body b have plus 9 coulomb initially after making contact with this body b what will be the final final charge on body a and b try to solve by yourself i hope students you have been solved correctly now this body a and b the total charge q a plus q b will be minus 3 coulomb plus 9 coulomb how much it is 6 coulomb now this 6 coulomb will equally divided in both the body a and b that is 6 by 2 and this is the positive so the plus 3 coulomb and plus 3 coulomb hope you enjoy this example which is very easy now the next example try to solve you are having three bodies a b and c identical remember both all the three bodies are identical a b and c and listen carefully this question this body a have two coulomb positive two coulomb this is neutral body and this body have six coulomb you have to bring this body a and make contact with body b which one is going a is going to make contact with b now b is here only again this a remove the contact with b and bring to make contact with c which one is coming again a is coming to make contact with c and finally all three bodies are separated a b and c so the question is you have to find the final charge final charge on all the bodies a b and c this is body c so pause your video and try to find out the answer what will be the answer okay students let me solve this question so a were made contact with b so the total charge of a and b it is 2 coulomb plus it was neutral so it is 2 coulomb only now arrange a and b a having 2 by 1 that is a 1 coulomb positive and b having 1 coulomb positive okay now b itself is here only again a is to bring and make contact with c initially when a bring to make contact with c it has one coulomb and this body c have six coulomb so the total charge q a plus q c one plus six coulomb how much it is seven coulomb since equally charge will divide on both a and c so how much it is 7 by 2 3.5 and 3.5 coulomb both the positive positive 3.5 and positive 3.5 so finally you can arrange a b and c because later on you will be asked to find the electrostatic force between a b and c try to arrange a b and c a finally a having plus 3.5 coulomb 
B because it was made contact once only so one coulomb and C finally having 3.5 coulomb this is plus 3.5 coulomb plus 3.5 coulomb so this is the answer the final charge on A will be 3.5 coulomb final charge on B will be 1 coulomb plus 1 coulomb and final charge on this body C will be plus 3.5 coulomb now students next topic we will discuss calculation of calculation of amount of charge amount of charge hmm. suppose students uh, i'm asking a question that uh, find the amount of of negative charge negative charge in 250 gram of water that is probably the one cup of water contain 250 gram it is not a standard data but uh, you should remember in examination sometime it is asked as in one cup of water calculate the total amount of negative charges so how you will solve this question actually to solve this question you have to use mole concept that you have been studied in chemistry mole concept before starting or uh, solving this question we should remember the value mole and the number of electron that is in mole avogadro's number etc in one molecule of of water how many electrons are there number of electrons so it is h2o is a two electrons of hydrogen and eight electrons of oxygen so we have total 10 electrons in how many molecules in one molecules we are having 10 electrons in one molecule now we have to find how many molecules are there in 250 g of water so one mole of h2o contains how many grams of water so 2 grams of hydrogen and 16 grams of oxygen so it is 2 gram plus 16 gram it is 18 gram of water one mole and one mole it is equivalent to the avogadro's number how many molecules it is the solid it will behaves like solid 6.022 times 10 to the power 23 molecules if you are not remember then you should remember it this is not very tough question you have been studied in your standard 11th and i think 9th or 10th also so one mole is equals to this much molecules and one mole equivalent to the 18 gram it means 18 gram of water is equivalent to the 6.022 10 to the power 23 molecules 
molecules and one gram or directly we can write to not make expand this video 250 gram of h2o will be equivalent to 6.022 10 to the power 23 over 18 times 250 molecules molecules okay so this much number of molecules as we have discussed already one molecule here of h2o contains 10 electron here the one molecule contains 10 electrons so the number of electrons will be 10 times the total number of molecule since one molecule contain 10 electron so this much molecule will contain 6.022 10 to the power 23 by 18 times 250 electrons hope you are getting you can pause the video and make calculation so this will give you the number of n now you are having the value of n but the question was asked you have to find the amount of negative charge according to the quantization of charge q is n times e so n you can put from here it is n times electron that is the charge of electron 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and you will get the answer it is the amount of charge that is the q later on you will use the question will be asked if the total number total negative and positive charges of 250 gram of water are lumps together and separated by some distance then find the electrostatic force between these two charges so in this way you have to find out the number of negative charge and positive charge remember water is electrically neutral if it is electrically neutral and it has the total number of electron is this much then it is having the total number of proton also so the same number of electron and proton so you can find the electro electrostatic force between these two charges students here i'm leaving you a question as assignment home assignment you have to find the number of protons in 10 gram of copper okay find the number of protons in 10 gram of copper try to solve this question in next video lecture i will give you answer of this question student so student today video lecture i will conclude with the last topic which is the very important it is coulomb's law in electrostat coulomb's law in electrostat okay coulomb's law in electrostat coulomb's law is uh, applicable for point charges remember between point charges the concept of point charges will discuss later on when we will study about the giant bodies i don't want to just make complex this uh, law for you simply try to understand the coulomb's law is applicable for point charges coulomb actually find that if we are having two charges here the two charges q1 and q2 
right now i am telling you the magnitude of force later on we will discuss about the vector form of this coulomb's law this two charges q1 and q2 are separated by a vector distance r so according to coulomb the force of attraction or repulsion remember the force of attraction or repulsion it is depend upon the nature of charge if these two charges are like charges then there will be repulsion and dislike charges there will be attraction we have discussed in properties of charge so the force of attraction or repulsion according to coulomb the force of this distance r remember it is from the center of two body that is the center of mass or the center of two bodies so the force of attraction or repulsion is directly proportional to the product of charges and it is inversely proportional to the square of separation between two charges it is the inversely proportional to the square of separation that's why it is also called the inverse square law so it is directly proportional to the product of charges and inversely proportional to the square of separation between two charges you can write in your notebook as a statement also here i'm not writing in a statement i'm telling you now this two can be considered as this two can be considered as the equation and combining this two equation we can write here the force of attraction or repulsion between two charges is directly proportional to the product of charges and reciprocal that is inversely proportional to the square of separation compensating this proportionality constant coulomb find that for each pair of charge there is a fixed amount for the product compensating it is considered as k as a constant proportionality constant now q1 q2 by r square this k was studied later on and it is equivalent to the 1 by 4 pi epsilon not whose numerical value is 9 into 10 to the power 9 newton meter square per coulomb square 9 into 10 to the power 9 plus 9 newton meter square per coulomb square you can see newton this will give you meter square divided by this coulomb square so newton meter square per coulomb square this is the value of k here epsilon not it is epsilon it is called epsilon that is the epsilon and the here not for the absolute value we represent here the not so epsilon not it is called absolute permittivity absolute permittivity for air or you can say the vacuum this value is 8.85 10 to the power minus 12 i am leaving here the unit of this epsilon not try to find out the unit of epsilon not i can help you this epsilon not is reciprocal to the k if you are having the unit of k as newton meter square per coulomb square then the unit of epsilon not will be just reciprocal of this that is the coulomb square per newton per meter square so it is the 8.8510 power minus 12 if we introduce the medium between these two charges any medium later on we'll study as dielectric then the force will change how this force will change we'll discuss in detail but here we are having um, this coulomb's law and finally a formula for the calculation of force it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon not 
times q1 q2 over r square remember students while solving the numerical we use magnitude of the force by this formula and the direction of force will try to understand in next video lecture by the vector rule so this is all about today lecture number 3 students in next lecture we'll start from the coulomb's law how to solve few simple questions of this coulomb's law and uh, how to study this coulomb's law in vector form so that it would be easy for you to solve few complex question of competition thank you students